Right, hey everyone, welcome to another video from the Parrot Bros. Now today we are here at a course at Badger 5. Got the new merch, got to check out the new bobble hats, lovely jubbly, because it is freezing, <laughs> freezing here. Um, some say if you spend enough money, they'll give you one for free. I have no idea if that means anything. I may or may not have done this. Um, <laughs> so the car's down here today because basically I had a running issue. Um, it was running fine and then suddenly it started to overboost. Now the brilliant thing is because I've got Ignatron, got the tablet, downloaded a log, emailed it over to Bill and he said, yep, you've got a boost issue, unplug your N75, drive down, we'll stick it on the dyno and that's where we are today. So let's go and have a quick look at the car set up and then we'll jump into the car and do some runs. So now, of course, at Badger 5, they have a state-of-the-art cell. We've also done a smoke test already. They do that on all cars um, as a bit of a health check before they do a run because obviously you never know what could be wrong with the car. It could be something as simple as um, having a boost leak. So the car's set up on a dyno. We've already done a few runs. Um, come have a quick look. We've actually had to replace one of the cables because I had an issue with the cable on my Ignatron system. Um, but the car is already set up. They've got a few um, gauges on it. They've got it earth. Um, they've got Lambda probes in there. So they can see absolutely everything they need to see. And of course, because it's got the Ignatron, we can plug in and we can watch exactly what's happening on the car. If you have a look in there, um, you can see the laptop is already set up and it, can, it was checking my fueling whilst we were doing a run earlier. Um, we seem to have sorted the issue. It was slightly requesting for a little bit too, many, too, much, too much boost, too many... PSI, and that was because at some point it's had the turbo off. The previous owner swapped the turbo because he thought he had an issue with the turbo, got it rebuilt. When they put it on, the new actuator is in a slightly different position, uh, which is then asking for different things, causing me problems. Um, so what we'll do is we'll jump in the car, we'll do some runs, and then towards the end, we're gonna stick the meth in, and then we'll see what figures we can achieve today. Now, before this come here, and I think it was 343 horsepower um, to the flywheel, We'll see what we can get. Let's get in the car. Now, shortly after seeing this run, you'll notice that my number plate started to become loose. Now, luckily, I filmed it because you would not believe where it went. Watch this. I must admit, I'll be honest, with the Ignatron, right, I literally have it set, and all I do is in the corner of my eye look for red, because I'm just waiting for a gauge to hit red, apart from the Lambda, because yeah. the moment you let off, that goes red, green, like red, yeah. back to normal. Yeah. It's like just ready on the throttle to just sidestep it to let off in case I see a red. It's like, whoop. Yeah. That's the thing with people are festooning <laughs> cars with gauges. It's like, when have you got time to look at the gauges? Well, do you know what gets me in a TT? They're there. Why would you take this out and put a gauge set there so you're like this? Like, how is that? I mean, I get, don't get me wrong, I hate them, but a pillar gauge is far more superior than anything below the dashboard because yeah, a liquid gauge uh, kind of because it's there and you can kind of see it and if it has a light on it then fair enough but yeah. but yeah like when you have them down by the gear knob i mean what you how do you learn to drive oh, yeah, i'm just gonna put it into gear and look down while i crash into something yeah i'll just steer it into the fucking awful to the hedge that's why drag cars have a have a massive um, rev counter right there with a light on so they can physically see it bloody great light on top <clears throat> it just yeah, anything other than sort of eye line, you just think, why would you have it mounted down here? Yeah, it was sat nav, but. Yeah, yeah. Let's see what. The dyno slogging stuff as well as Ignitron. Yeah. So we've got AFR. Yeah. On the top one. Boost, vacuum on that one. Yeah. Speeds, power, and torque and stuff, yeah. which is more relevant when we're actually going to do runs and stuff. This is it. This is just geared up, ready to go TG and RPMs. So yep. when I press start, it'll kick us into teach me stuff. We're warmed up, so it's cool and yep. So these have a base value of what they should be allowed to run at to give you full boost. And yeah, there's, there's settings for boost control 
based off in the air temperature. Yeah. So it's allowed. Yeah, so it's too hot or too cold. Yeah, engine coolant temp and SU 70 degrees and above. You can't have more than 1.2 bar, for example. Yeah, which is smart. It's configurable, and likewise, if it gets to 100, you'll start to pull boost away. And that's the same for EGTs as well, isn't it? Yeah. EGTs, same. So yeah. So up until a certain temperature is good, you can it? have full boost up to 9. 920 and above, it will pull it away. Yeah, just to save it. It's still okay for at the end of the day. Yeah, but then by then you should have other issues, not just that. Yeah, yeah. Well, because you can measure it, you can compensate for it. Yeah. Whether this one's set up that uh, under question I get asked quite a lot right is with um, with these cars can you put on a no lift shift yes is it bad for it yes how bad really bad I thought I, that was I thought that would be the answer <laughs> because you're basically just dumping fuel right um, it's not the fuel you're just doing a hard cut on the ignition yeah so you've got engine at full chat then you turn it off and off. then you're hitting it back again with like 100%. And then you turn it back yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. So your full beans, full throttle, high revs, <laughs> turn it off, turn it back on again. Yeah. Da dang. It's like. And the bang is because there's unspent fuel. When you turn it back on. Sat there, ready to just. Oh, yeah, we're back on. Bang. Ign ignite. Yeah. It's like. Sounds good though. Yeah, it does. <laughs> Turning on the anti lag is a nicer way of doing it. Yeah, yeah. Although anti lag is also destructive if you set it aggressively. Yeah, yeah. But the flat, sh the flat shift is, is there. It's on or off, it's just yeah, that, no sympathetic. That, that just... version's on or off, it's, it is brutal on the hardware. So no lift shift is not good? No, don't do it. Buy a DSG so you can have the farts instead. <laughs> <laughs> if you want noise and gear changes. Well, if you're an English on, you just enable the anti-lag. <laughs> the anti-lag will do it. Oh, OK. So you can set an uh, ignition retard, not an ignition cut. What, from the moment you hit the clutch? Yeah. And the retard, you get two choices of uh, how much retard you want to add to it. Yeah. Retarding it will give you boost, maintain boost, and you keep a throttle position open and the driver wire, so you're off the pedal, but yeah. the throttle isn't, so you're maintaining boost. Ah, that's interesting. Which was the point of no lift shift. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But no lift shift in ME7 hacks yeah. is brutal ignition yeah. cut. Well, I mean, you, you are buying effectively an ECU, which is someone's bench set up, that you plug in and then just destroy your car with most of the time, because it's stage three, immobiliser off. <sighs> yeah. Stage three. Yeah. Stages. You gotta love Stages, those. yeah. So, the car is done. Um, is it what you expected? Yeah, it's doing K4 380 things. <laughs> She's an old girl. The engine's had some life yeah. in its previous life, so yeah, it's doing okay. Yeah. It's not magnificent, it's not top of the range, but it's okay. It's in the range of 340 to 360 horsepower, which is what we typically see. It's, I mean, it's a lot for a K04. It's still a K04. Yeah. It's still a K04. You have to remember that. I remind myself that regularly. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. over, what are we, 120 horsepower more than it left the factory with. So it's, it's not, but not doing bad. No. Um, so ironed out the issues, so I had an issue where basically any time I hit boost it just stopped on me. Yeah. Which the reason it did that was actually good because obviously the Ignatron was stopping me from blowing my car up, right? Absolutely, yeah. Uh, yeah. It might be inconvenient, <laughs> but it still runs. So, yeah, on a, on a stock car, particularly tuned where you're running the, on a stock ECU, ME7. Yeah and you're running above the map sensor limit, which is only 1.5 bar. Yeah. This runs at 1.7 bar boost, so a factory ECU would be going, 
I can see 1.5, but I can't do anything about it in the case it went over because I'm already over. Yeah. There's, there's no safety, which is a risk you run. So oh, yeah, for sure. When you're running the likes of a control, there's, there's so many more safeties you can invoke, and one of them is overboost, which is what kicked in, and also a sensor error that you went over boost, which also over voltage the map sensor and the combination of the pair of them. They went, that can't be right, limp yeah. mode. If in doubt, yeah. limp mode, turn off boost, shut the throttle down uh, and fix it. Yeah. But and it keeps it one piece. Exactly, yeah. And I mean, basically this all boiled down to, before I bought the car, they had a little bit of an issue with smoking. Um, so they took the turbo off, got the turbo sent away just for a rebuild and a health check. Mm -hmm but we think at some point they've adjusted the wastegate slightly differently to how it was before. Yeah, it, all it could take is half a turn extra compared to what it was mapped to. Yeah. Some, you know, some while ago, plus some wear and tear. Springs on actuators get softer over time. Yeah. Maybe they revisited this fresh spring. Yeah. A bit springier, it's a bit stiffer, so the duty cycles of boost control are now not appropriate for it. And that's the tolerances that the, the, the Ignatron is set up to, is that fine? Yeah, the, the limp modes were set tight, <coughs> I generally do, I'd rather it would limp mode than blow up. Uh, me too, in, in for, what it, for what it costs to come here for the day, have a health check, do the runs, and then drive home in it again, rather than me getting it trailered here and then yeah. handing you a new engine's worth of money to... Absolutely, and the benefit of of the internal logging that Igantron's got is... Well, yeah, because I emailed you and you already told me what I had the problem with before I even came here, which is... That's it. The mental. You can look at a log, Igantron's looking, all seeing, uh, it's logging your driving and what's going on, and if there's limp modes or problems, you just download the internal log, email it to us. Yeah. We have a look and go, ah. Wherever yeah. you are in the world. Doesn't have to be in the UK. Worldwide, yep. We do map these worldwide, so... But we can, because Igantron logging is phenomenal. It is wicked. It is really... I mean, to, see, to be able to see... I'll show you some video as we go, but um, as we saw, the car literally shows everything. It shows fueling from start to finish, air from fuel to finish, like not everything, the whole lot. Mm -hmm. Temperature, at what point it was doing each thing, and it's just... Yeah, you can replay... It is insane. You can replay the data logs, either the internal <coughs> or the logs if we would make it today with the laptop on the full software, and you can replay your power run or your run up the road back in the software so you can see the exact trace of where the car where the trace was running yeah and if there was a, a problem area you, you see it, the cursor is just lit up you say ah okay it was a bit rich there or over yeah. there and you see exactly where you're in the map it said it's telling you what's going on therefore you can make changes and you just to clarify for everyone who doesn't know you don't need to have a big power car for ignatron do you you could put it onto literally anything yeah I mean, benefits are you can ditch the muffs, which are notoriously unreliable. Yeah. More so on hybrid cars. I mean, we only stick to 80 mil muffs as the standard yeah. flow seat size that we'll run. But they will max out voltage-wise at about high, high 300s, 370-odd horsepower. But when they're operating at that, that horsepower level, they're also maximum voltage output, and they fail rapidly. Yeah. So you'll go through a lot of muffs. Ignatron, you ditch all that, you go muffless, but properly muffless, not the ME7 hack. Uh, you run a map sensor off the inlet manifold, so you run what's called speed density, uh, and tune it that way, which is what most people do. And you can also, that. of course, have mappable options. So you can do the data login, you can obviously, if you run into issues or you're going to be changing things regularly, you can always just pop in, get a map update, super simple compared to yeah. having to hardware break something or trying to work around what yeah. things you can the, change the sensors are scalable so you, you you choose your hardware so on an me7 you can't scale map sensors no uh, on the Ignatron you can put whatever size map sensor you want so. and you can watch them in real time so i could sit i could literally set my cluster up for like 100 different gauges yeah and i can have eight say for instance and they can be set to intake temp coolant temp oil temp all the yeah. things that you're going to want to be watching if you're hooning around and it's yeah. 30 degrees outside. Yeah, whilst knowing you can set some limp modes, which will... Also take... stop it, even if you don't see it. That's right, you can stop stuff in terms of limp modes, but it can also turn stuff down in terms of, I've got too hot, which is important. Yeah, so they so retard. Boost yeah. control. So boost control, if you're getting above uh, engine coolant temperature, an EGT level, uh, inlet air temp, if any of these are getting in the wrong side, then you set them up up to turn stuff back down, else you're just beating it to death. Amazing. So, yeah, because yeah, I mean, the problem is when you're having fun, you're not looking down, you're looking forward and 
No, no, that's right. And just, you, but then if it does something, you go, oh, why is it put me into limp mode? Right, yeah. let me, let's check. On the screen, click, check, the, click the engine thing, and then bosh, it's got this, and then you're like, right, Bill, what's this? Yeah, send a log. <laughs> what, have I, what have I done? Yeah, tell me what's broken. <laughs> yeah. But mate, thanks for having us. If anyone's got any questions or wants any 1.8 tuning or uh, MQB, 2 MQB, litre. TFSI, you know, it's a VAC car, four cylinder. Typically, we are doing our 32 turbos yeah. on Ignatron. Well. And you supply, fit, do any mechanical work, not just it's a full the Ignatron, job. not the dyno, everything. So even if you want a health check, even if you didn't want to map your car, your car is 5, 10, 20 years old, I would recommend coming down here for a health check, dyno, set, do you know what I mean? Go through and just see if it's all right. Yeah. Because yeah. There's, there's no harm in, in running a car. You're going to be driving it on the road. It's no different. They drive it on here and they might be able to give you some pointers of, yeah. you could have a weak fuel pump. It could be something as simple as things Absolutely. like that. So, and if we can diagnose it, we can log this stuff on the dyno. So better well, to do it here. You can go high speed here. Uh, legally. No, legally. No cops going to stop you. There's no potholes <laughs> to rip your wheels off. Yeah. And you get a sheet with pub figures. Yeah. <laughs> All good. Accurate ones. Right, thanks for watching, guys. I'll catch you on the next one. Bye for now.